guys welcome back to my channel I'm here today with yet another baby product to review if this is your first time to my channel my name is Kayla and I have a three-month-old son named Simon I make videos talking about baby products that I like or dislike and just sharing bits of my life now that I have a baby today's video is going to be an in-depth 30 day review of the Snoo Best Net. So I decided to film clips over the course of 30 days to show how we liked the Best Net from the very beginning and how my son was adjusting to it and how he liked it and then our final thoughts after 30 days. And the reason we wanted to do 30 days is because the company that makes the Snoo Happiest Baby, they have a 30 day no risk return policy. So I hope that this way that I filmed it and my take on it is really helpful for you if you're thinking of getting the Snoo for your baby. The Snoo is one of the most, if not the most, expensive bassinet on the market. You're going to see this thing all over social media, but I can assure you I paid for it with my own money. This is really the only baby product we have that would be considered high end. That's not true, I guess. I do have an Uppa Baby stroller, but I did buy it used on Facebook, so I don't think that counts. But I think it's really important to do your research before making such a huge purchase, no matter how much money you have. No matter what I say in the video or what my impressions of the Snoo were, this is only my opinion and what happened with my baby, and every baby is so incredibly different. So I don't want you to base your decision completely off this video. You should continue to do more research. This is just one person's take on it. That's something I heard so many times when I was pregnant that every baby is different. And I heard it, but I don't think I really understood what that meant until I had my son because there are so many things we bought for him that had great reviews online and he has no interest in. Similarly, there are things that I didn't buy because I thought they were tacky or not popular or they didn't have great reviews and now he loves them. I bought into the hype on so many baby products. I think I need to make a whole video on baby product regrets because there are many. I would never want anyone to take my word as like the final say and make their decision purely off that, but I do hope that it's helpful. So I'm going to show you my initial unboxing from the day that we got this new, and then you'll see some clips over the course of the 30 days that we tried it. And then at the end, my husband joins me and we kind of uh, talk about our thoughts on it and whether or not we decided to keep it. So with that, I hope you enjoyed the video. Today is a big day because our snoo arrived in the mail. I am excited and nervous and a little nauseous still that I paid over a thousand dollars. This is the snoo. I'm sure you've heard of it. If you're watching this video, it probably means <laughs> that you're pregnant or you have a baby or you care a lot about someone who's having a baby and want to buy them a very expensive gift. It's a smart bassinet. It connects to your phone. The big deal is that it's supposed to add one to two hours of sleep. Pretty much everyone that leaves a positive review is saying that their baby is sleeping 11 to 12 hours a night. My husband and I want to try it. The Snoo is so incredibly expensive. I'm sure there are bassinets more expensive, but this is the most expensive one that I actually hear about. To buy the Snoo brand new is $1,395 plus tax. We got it for 20% off, so it was $1,116 plus tax. We ended up paying just over $1,200 at the end of the day. We got it on sale because it was Snoo's like fourth birthday or something like that but i've heard they actually have a black friday sale that might be 30 percent off so that's probably your best time to get it it's included with three sleep sacks one small one medium one large and i know a lot of people buy extras because obviously you need more than one like swaddle for your baby but we just are starting with what they sent us um, it also comes with one sheet and 24 seven access to their sleep consultants and a one year warranty. Um, you can also rent the Snoo, but I actually didn't think it was that good of a deal. They advertise $129 per month on the website and I'm like, oh, that's great because we probably will only need it for max three more months. But then you add it to your cart and it's $129.50 for one month plus an $89.50 cleaning fee plus a $99 security deposit plus tax, 
plus a $60 return fee. So just for one month of rental out of pocket, it was over $300. So it really didn't feel like that good of a deal. We'll take it, we'll try it out. If we hate it or it doesn't improve his sleep, we'll just sell it for almost what we paid for it because we got it on sale. And there are tons of people on Facebook buying snooze, selling snooze, there's snoo groups. You can get rid of this thing in a second if you don't want it anymore. Right now we have the Graco Sense to Snooze bassinet and it's more or less the same concept as this. It's supposed to rock the baby back to sleep when they wake up. He doesn't love it. We pretty much have to put him to sleep sitting up in his snuggle meat in the bassinet and then slowly pull him down after he falls asleep. We're going to try this out. There is a one month no risk return, um, but a lot of people say you don't know in just a month if your baby sleep has improved. For us, he's already over two months. Like if we don't see any improvement in a month, then I think we would be hesitant to keep it, but we'll see. So I'm just gonna unbox it and show you what's inside and then see what it looks like all put together. It is a very nice bassinet. If, if you're going for a minimalist or mid-century modern look in your uh, nursery or in your house, this is like perfect for you. And I think that's why a lot of people get it. Regardless of the sleep promises, it just looks really nice. Okay. Ooh. Oh, okay. There is a bag over it. I thought this was the actual, like, bed. Accessories from our happiest family to yours. Everything's in French and English. Is this, like, a French brand? User guide. Oh, right here. Is this the French one? Snoo user guide. Congratulations. I'm assuming this is how to put it back together which actually is very smart of them to include because I'm sure people send this back all the time. All right, so here we have the sleep sacks. Now, from what I understand, these are essentially swaddles that attach to the bed. A medium is 12 to 18 pounds. I think Simon, our son, will be in a medium. The large is 18 to 25 pounds. Look under here, power supply inside. And these are the legs. <laughs> Ooh, they're heavy. And here it is. Here's the bed. Oh, it's heavy. It's really heavy. <laughs> okay. So it comes in this bag. Is this, this must be the small sack because I didn't see one in a box. So this must just be it. I think Simon will fit in this right now. So maybe we will start with the small. We're gonna try and put him down. Disclaimer, he doesn't like going to bed in a bed. We're gonna lay him down in it like this and put his arms flat like this. Something like this. Okay, okay and then zip this over it. Oh boy, little chunker. And then there are these two um, little handles on the side. Look at his face. And you slide them on and this side. So now he is in the swaddle connected to the bed. So right now it's, out, it's operating at the baseline. We haven't played with the settings at all, so if he starts crying, I think it's just gonna do whatever the snoo is automatically programmed to do. Probably if I hit the up button, it will like increase in level. Definitely, I think right off the bat, we're gonna need to 
use his sound machine on top of this. So you can have it set, choose very low, low, normal, high, or very high, and then you can also choose the level that it goes to if um, it needs to calm him down. I don't see any way to turn up the sound from my phone. Oh dear God. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. Hey guys, so we just finished our first night in the snow. I would say it was similar to the sleep he was getting in his old bassinet, but at the high end of the sleep he was getting in his old bassinet, if that makes sense. We didn't really get any naps in there at all. He just took one quick 30 minute nap, but that's pretty regular. He doesn't, I don't know if he doesn't like being in the room by himself. Usually we have to put him in his snuggle me out in the living room with us for him to take a nap. The good thing was that we got to try out a lot of the functions. So I ended up setting it to stop motion at level two if he starts crying, but allow the sound to go up to level three and level four because I thought level three and level four motion was just a little too intense for him. You can lock it at any given level. If your baby enjoys the movement of level one and, and even when they cry, you don't want it to go above that, you just hit the little lock button on the screen or you could lock it at the baseline and just use this thing as a bassinet and not have it moving them at all. It's up to you. It's totally what your baby likes. Simon seems to like it at level one. Um, I usually have to put him down completely asleep, but the Happiest Baby Company that makes the snoo actually does recommend that if you're using the snoo for a slightly older baby and you're transitioning them from a different bassinet that you actually do put them down asleep for the first couple nights. We put him down at 8.58 and it didn't register as sleep because we forgot to lock him into the little plastic pegs and he needs to be secured onto them for it to register that he's in the bed. He ended up getting up for a little while. Around 11, we put him down and he stayed asleep until 4.48. So that's a five hour and 37 minute stretch of sleep, which is by no means amazing, but it's definitely as long as he was sleeping in his old bassinet. It was just our first night. I think there's gonna be a transition period. I'm not amazed yet, but I'm not gonna completely write it off based on just one night of sleep. For some people that would be amazing, five, five and a half hours, but I'm really hoping that we can get more. So let's keep going. Hey guys, we are now on day three of this new and we finished night two. So yesterday actually when I was filming my night one updates, I had put Simon back down. So he woke up at 4.48 a.m. and then I had put him back down and then I was filming the update. He ended up sleeping for like another three and a half hours. He didn't wake up until 8.45. So that was awesome. Then we got him to take two really short naps in the snoo yesterday, but the rest of the time he was in his snuggle me still. The sleep last night was pretty good. So we tried to put him down at seven and he woke up shortly after and just was not having it. He didn't want to be in the room. We're, I don't know, we're still kind of like at a loss what to do in those situations. We ended up bringing him out to the living room and hanging out with him out there for a little while, trying to get him sleepy. At 10.30, we put him down. He fussed for a few. The two um, back legs under his head, we put them up on tuna cans so he was elevated. He slept for six hours and 55 minutes and woke up at 5.40 a.m. Instead of like feeding him and putting him back down, I kept him up for a little while, put him back down around 6.50 and he slept until 8.50. So another good night of sleep for us. I feel pretty rested. So six hours and 50 minutes is long. That's I think the longest he's ever slept. He was kind of on that upward trajectory already in his old bassinet. Like he was doing five hour stretches, six hour stretches. So I'm not like completely convinced yet. Like he really could have been getting there on his own. So I'll probably need to see a little more to think that it's the snooze doing, but I mean, I'm pretty well rested today. So I'm happy about that. Hi guys. So I forgot to film night three. Um, and we just finished night four. Night four went great, but night three, not so much. Long during the day, he took like a 
three hour nap and usually I wouldn't let him sleep that long but he had slept so like poorly during his other naps that I thought maybe he just needed that one long stretch. We actually didn't get him to go down for the night until after midnight and he only slept until like three and then he didn't want to go back down so it took me almost yeah, like a full wake window to get him to go back to sleep. At 4.21, he went back down and he slept until six. So that was just another really short stretch. <sighs> I was so beat yesterday. And then he napped in his snoo all day yesterday. They weren't long naps. I think he would have slept longer in his snuggle me, but I was happy to at least like get him used to it. At 9.30, he went to sleep and he slept until 12.45. And that was actually the first time that I feel like we got to use the snooze functions because he started to cry. I bumped it up to level two. I like put my hand on his chest and was shushing him and then he fell back asleep. Granted, he only fell asleep for like 20 minutes, but still it was good to see that it did something. And then uh, at that point, I feel like he just needed to eat. He's definitely not ready to let go of his middle of the night feeding. We fed him and then we put him back down at 4 a.m. and he slept until 7.30. So another three and a half hour stretch, which was really nice. I'm hoping that because last night went decently well that we're gonna start seeing longer stretches. I definitely don't want another night three again. Hi, we just finished night 10 and I needed to check in because it's been a few days since the last time I did an update. Things have taken a complete turn, like total 180. It all started on Halloween. We went to my mom's house and we didn't get home until after midnight. He went to bed that night at 12.45 and he slept until 7. And then since then, it's just been on the up and up. The night after that, he went down at 7.45. He slept till 1.30 and then we did a feeding and he went back down pretty easily at 2.14 and slept until 6.00. That was exciting because we got him to go down at like a normal bedtime and he slept until 6 a.m. And then the night after that, 7.53 he went down, he slept until 2. We did a diaper change, fed him, and then he went back down at 3 until 6 a.m. And then the night after that, he went down at 7.30 and slept until almost 2.30. And then an hour later, he went back down and slept until seven. The past couple days have just been awesome. I feel so rested. He seems like he's in a better mood too. And I just feel like we have a little flow going on now. He's getting to bed before eight. He's waking up for one feeding around the same time every night, two to 3 a.m. And then going back down until about the same time every morning. So this just feels awesome. I'm like, I still don't know if it's the snoo or if it's just where he's at developmentally, but I, at this point, I'm just so happy to be getting sleep. Oh, last night was a huge setback. I think I jinxed myself yesterday when I was filming the update about how great the past couple nights had been because last night was a disaster. He went down at around 7.30 and did not stay asleep long at all. We didn't end up getting him down for the night until after midnight. Then he only slept until 4 a.m. So it was less than four hours of sleep. I guess some people would think four hours is good, but compared to what we were getting the past couple nights, it felt awful. I tried to just feed him and put him back down and he was not having it. He went back down at 5.30 and then he woke up again at six. I just gave up at that point and we started the day. So like four and a half hours total sleep for the night. A few weeks ago that probably would have been awesome but like my body has adjusted now to getting longer stretches at night. Today I just feel like garbage. I went into this with like a really open mind about how long it might take the snoo to work or if it would work at all but to like have this thing next to my bed that costs so much money and then to wake up feeling this tired it just annoys me i kind of got my wish last night yesterday while i was filming he took a two and a half hour nap so that was a little morning surprise after such a rough night and then last night i was like all right let's give it another try he went down at eight and he slept until 5 a.m i don't know what happened i don't know if 
Night 11 was just like this crazy fluke and he's back on a good path but he got a nine hour and 10 minute stretch of sleep, which is the longest he's ever slept. It's so awesome, but it's throwing me for such a loop because I was like sure yesterday that I was done with this thing. And then today he slept awesome. So now I don't know. Maybe we should try putting him back in his great go bassinet and see what happens. So maybe we'll try that. Well, <laughs> we did it. We swapped out the snoo for his old bassinet. The fact that his Graco sense to snooze is sitting right here holding his clothes that he's too big for should tell you how it went. <laughs> the reason that we decided to try it was because on Sunday we had our lactation consultant come to our house and we were just talking about the baby's health and sleep in general. I told her that we had the snoo and she like basically rolled her eyes and I played it off as like maybe it was kind of a silly purchase and she was like yeah it is you should just sell it and use that money to get more breastfeeding equipment. So then when she left my husband was like see it's a waste of money we should return it and I thought okay you know, like I don't want to spend this money if I don't have to. So let's put his Graco back in his room tonight and use that instead. Around seven, we took out his new, put his Graco back in. He slept for like 20 minutes and then woke up. We were like, okay, well, he's just unfamiliar. So we rocked him back to sleep, put him down for 30 minutes and he woke up. And then we're like, okay, well maybe his reflux is bothering him. So we sat him up and he fell asleep and we pulled him down like we used to do. He woke up again after like 35 minutes. Eventually at like nine, it had been two hours of us trying and my husband was going to sleep and I was like, I'm not doing this all night. Put the snoo back in. So we put the snoo back and he went to bed at 9.07 and slept until 5.48 a.m. which is a eight hour and 39 minute stretch. So yeah, that's, that's what happened when we tried to get rid of the snoo. The Great Go Sense to Snooze also has cry sensing technology and rocks the baby back to sleep. It's a different rocking motion. The snoo rocks side to side and the Graco rocks back and forth and our baby has reflux. So I wonder if that back and forth rocking is like sloshing the contents of his stomach around more or something. That's the only thing I can think because otherwise they're very similar concepts. Pending anything crazy happening, I don't know really why we would get rid of our snoo at this point because look what happened when we tried to. Guys, just popping on here to say 11 and a half hours last night. 11 and a half, 11 and a half. So he is just short of three months old and he slept 11 and a half hours last night. <sighs> I feel so happy. Okay, the good news is that my baby sleeps awesome in the snoo and the bad news is that he sleeps terribly anywhere that is not the snoo. Uh, we went to my friend's house two nights ago and we were only there for one night so my husband wanted to bring the snoo and I said no it's fine he can just sleep in his snuggle me like he used to do. I think he slept no longer than an hour increment all night. We had him in his snuggle me in the pack and play and I was like shaking the pack and play and I don't think it's meant to be shaken. Just trying to mimic the motion of the snoo and he was just waking up constantly. It took us forever to get him to go to sleep and then he was just up all night. So we were completely exhausted. And then we got home last night and I thought, we screwed ourselves like he is going to completely regress and we're gonna have to start from the snoo all over again and guess what he went to sleep at 709 and he slept until 402 in the morning then he quickly went back to sleep from 443 until 739 so he slept a ton now we know anytime we go anywhere overnight, we have to bring the snoo. So there's some downsides to that. It's like now he's dependent on it, but also we hardly go anywhere. So it's really a non-issue. Hi, 
Last night was super weird. We put him to bed at 7.35, which is like his normal bedtime, and he only slept until eight. This is just a pattern we're seeing a lot recently where he treats bedtime like it's another short nap and he wakes up pretty quickly afterward. Instead of like going back to sleep really easily, he needs another full wake window. So we're up with him for a while. Um, we did get him to go down at 10.07 and then he slept until almost one o'clock. At that point, I got him out of bed and decided to feed him. But usually those middle of the night feeds, I'll feed him and try to put him right back down. And I tried a few times and he just kept waking up. So finally at 1.50, I got him to go to sleep and he slept until 7.40 in the morning. So once he was asleep, it was a pretty decent stretch. I don't know, it was just a weird night and I think I'm just calling it a fluke. Like at his age, there's just so many factors that could be disrupting one night of sleep. It was a bummer. <laughs> Hey guys, just finished night 28. The whole week, like the past couple nights, he's just not into the seven o'clock hour bedtime. He just wants to go to bed later. Like I think I said it in my last update, he's just waking up a lot after we put him to bed and then he wants like a whole other wake window. But I don't think it's any fault with the snoo because like once he does go down, he sleeps through the night. It's just, we're like putting him to sleep and we know he's gonna wake up again. So we don't really like relax or anything. We're just waiting for the cry. I mean, at this point we're keeping it but we have two more nights until I like film my final thoughts. So we'll see how those go. All right guys, we finished night 30. You might be able to hear the baby crying. My husband's trying to put him to sleep. Um, night 30 was pretty indicative of things went the last couple weeks or so. We put him down at 7.15. He slept for like 30 minutes, woke up and didn't want to go back to sleep. Um, I ended up having to like get him out and do like his whole bedtime routine again. Um, finally 8, 12, he went down for the night and he slept for nine hours and 49 minutes. So that was a great stretch of sleep. And that's just like how it's been. He's just takes a few tries to get him to understand it's bedtime. And then once he's asleep, he's out. Maybe we need like a better bedtime routine. I'm not really sure, but I definitely don't think it's the snooze fault that he's not understanding it's bedtime. Um, I think there's something we could be doing differently like throughout the day to sh differentiate naps and bedtime. Um, so that was night 30. We finished it out. I am going to wait a few more days until my husband is home and then we're gonna film like our final final thoughts on it so we just finished night 44 with our snoo it's safe to say we're not returning it now we're past the 30-day return window I wanted my husband here because I want to know his thoughts on it too it's so expensive and I hate that we needed to buy something so expensive to get a good night's sleep and I really wonder like if we had just stayed with his old bassinet how he would be sleeping now and it's impossible to know like you would need to have to go back in time and redo it to really know because now he's almost four months so maybe he would be a great sleeper either way but I feel like because we tried to go back to his old bassinet that one night and he slept so badly that really made us feel like the snoo was working and then also that night that we went to my friend's house and he just was sleeping in his snuggle me like that was such a bad night of sleep and I don't think I could handle that if that's how he was still sleeping every night both of those nights made me feel like the snoo was our savior but we're going to be paying it off for a really long time the only thing that makes me feel good about it is that I think it's a good investment like if we have more kids which we probably will <laughs> like we already have the best bassinet on the market for them do you feel like it was worth the money knowing that it's like sixteen hundred dollars full price that's not what we paid but that's what it is if you don't get it on sale i'm okay to pay for the price to make him see through the night there's so many things that I don't want to pay a ton of money for. Like I don't want to buy the most expensive diapers. I don't want to buy the most expensive sheets or the most expensive clothes. I think that sleep and having good sleep is something to spend money on because like he is back at work. 
the snoo allows him usually to sleep through the night without waking up right even if the baby wakes up like i just grab him i go out and feed him and he pretty much goes right back to sleep this is our first baby i don't know how it would be if we didn't have the snoo but i really think that we get a lot of sleep <laughs> for new parents i think we get a good snow, amount of sleep snow help a lot. and now that we're at day 44 he's just short of four months um we're gonna have to start thinking about getting him out of the snoo and putting him in his bed so what i've been trying to do <laughs> We have to do it eventually. <laughs> what I've been trying to do is putting him down awake. And I was so nervous about it, but he puts himself to sleep. So he's starting to get into his four month sleep regression. So in the middle of the night, he's waking up a lot. He wakes up several times throughout the night. And all I do is I put the snoo up to level two. I put my hand on his belly. When he cries, the snoo automatically will go up to level two, level three, level four. But I never let him get that far because if he even spits out his pacifier, I wake up. So the second I hear him spit it out and like start to move around, I turn it up to level two on my phone and he falls back asleep. So the snoo has the ability to do it all itself. But if you're like me, you're going to wake up anyway. And oh, the last thing I want to talk about was the swaddles. So just this last week, he has started to break out of his swaddles. He was waking up a lot and then I would unzip him and his arms would be up here and the band would be like around his neck and around his shoulders. So that's not safe. And also it's waking him up. So I am in this new mama's Facebook group and I asked the moms in that group um, what they do and they said double swaddle because as the babies get older, they can break out. So we have been doing bat wings is what it's called. We'll put a clip in, but you, okay. so you use a swaddle blanket to basically hold his arms down and then zip up that blanket inside the snoo swaddle. We've been doing that for two days now and he has not had the issue of breaking out of it. It has not gotten up around his neck and I feel like he's sleeping longer because he's not getting woken up. Those are our final thoughts. I think it was worth the money. I know it's not really affordable, but if you're thinking you can make one big baby purchase, this is the one to make because having good sleep is better than anything else. Like I would trade all my other expensive baby products. And also just look on Facebook because before we bought ours, there was so many snooze that you could buy on Facebook, but they go like that. Somebody puts them for sale for like 600, 700, $800. They're gone. That, that's just a good option to pay attention to. And there is a Facebook group called the big snoo buy, sell and trade, something like that. And that's really good too for parts like the leg lifters and the different size swaddle. So those are our final thoughts. I like this new. Um, I feel a little bad that my mom bought his other bassinet and now it's just sitting in his nursery like holding clothes. I'm sure it's good for somebody's baby, but with ours, I don't know if it's the reflux. He just hated that bassinet. He would not go to sleep in that bassinet and he woke up a lot. Hope that me taking you through the 30 days kind of gave you an idea of how it works. All right, well, thank you so much for watching and I hope this was helpful. If you have any questions about buying this new, how it works, any questions about how we liked it or our baby liked it, please leave them below. And I would really appreciate it if you like this video and subscribe for more baby content and baby product reviews. And thank you for watching and see you next time. Bye.